There's something magical about the idea of camping on a bed of gemstones. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale. We didn't intentionally come here to find gemstones. But they did find us. made a friend. A fellow RVer on a bicycle had stopped to chat with us and now I think his dog has adopted us. So what does one do in a place like this for up to two weeks? There are hiking trails. There are tons of trails for off-roading. You can search for the petroglyphs that we did not end up seeing. And some people just come for an hour or two to look for gems. This area is known to be one of the only areas in the world to find fire agate. Little tiny piece of fire agate. I've also spotted a white colored agate, quartz, other crystals, and desert rose, which I had never heard of before. You don't have to dig for it and you don't have to go off the beaten path to find it. It's just right on the road. I think the tires dig it up. The rain washes it up. For the record, I'm not a gem expert, but I did at one time collect them and use them in craft projects. My nephew is at an age where rock collecting and even rock tumbling might be fun for him, so I plan to save him a few pieces. This is where we spent the first couple of nights. This is where we came in and it's actually beyond the entrance that Google recommended. It seems to be a less rugged area and there are quite a few pull-through sites that are nice and wide open for larger rigs. After those who had spent the long holiday weekend here had gone back home, we made our way to one of the more private campsites we've been eyeing closer to the mountain. We're scouting out alternative places to park. This is a nice spot. We're just going up the road. And it did seem to clear out after the holiday weekend was over. This is where we spent the remainder of our 14 day camping limit. Not only is there a much better view of the sunset, but it stays sunnier longer than the other spot, which means we can take in more solar later in the day. The road leading into our new spot is rockier and more rugged, and we did spend some time removing sharp rocks from our path before we drove up here. I highly recommend scouting things out on foot so you don't end up in a precarious situation. The roads here are doable for the most part depending on what you're driving and you definitely want to take it slow because it is rocky and there are a few gullies in the area and we've seen numerous larger RVs having to back out because they couldn't make it through. This land is managed by BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. And at the time of making this video, it is free to camp here for up to 14 days. Just be sure to pack out what you pack in. So beautiful spots like this will stay open to the public. That being said, if you need a place to dump your trash or your tanks before or after your visit, Saddle Vista Ranch is not far. And a little inside scoop, if you ask the owner nicely, he may be able to arrange for you to receive a package if you're in a pinch. And your visit would not be complete without some love from Lucky the Rescue Dog. <laughs> Otherwise, the post office in Tonopah does offer general delivery, and we did have some mail sent there during our stay. Hi, Phoenix. 
If you would like to share the love with this channel, there are three things that you can do. Number one, you can press that like button. That'll let me know that you enjoyed this video. Number two, I love reading comments. So if you want to leave me a message, you can do that too. Both of those things are absolutely free. The third option is new and you will find it below the video screen over to the right on your mobile device. You might have to scroll over a little bit. It's a little heart button and it's called a super thanks. And that gives you the option to support this channel and the making of future videos.